with hands. Glory to you, Father. We thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that you manifest your presence among us. We thank you, Father, that we are here gathered together to worship you, to praise you, to magnify you, to lift you up. Jesus, wonderful. Yes, he is. Amen. I'm going to give a few announcements, and uh, so announcement number one is it's Rhonda's birthday. Let's give her a big round of applause. All right. Amen. I know uh, that is uh, Greg's child bride, and uh, uh, he's uh, he's a cradle robber, but uh, we thank God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Rhonda gets to celebrate a birthday. Glory to God. That's good. That's good. And uh, so make sure you uh, give her a hard time and uh, give her birthday wishes today. And uh, we are thankful. We're thankful that she's alive and that she was born. Glory to God. She's a blessing. This Thursday, that would be tomorrow, the Word Cure Healing Center tomorrow, uh, we're going to have it at 630. So it'll be 630 p.m right in the back of this auditorium. And so if you're in need of healing in your body, or you know of someone else that's in need of healing in their body, or you're just going to build your faith up along the lines of healing. You know, uh, Smith Wigglesworth said it like this. He said, if you, if you wait until you need faith to build faith, you're too late. Right. Mm -hmm. So, man, it's good to stay on top of some things, and healing would be one of those things. Hallelujah. Yes. We want to stay on top of those. You know, they say, they say that we are in, uh, uh, well, we are, I guess is what you could call it, a pandemic. But uh, so that's a good time to stay up in, in, up in faith on healing, isn't it? Amen. Amen. You know, this classified, you know, with the spread of a certain virus, it is classified because it's global, right? And so it's classified as being a pandemic. That's not a scary word. That's just a, a classification word. And uh, so, uh, man, what a good time. To have your faith built up along the lines of healing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, there's some things. Um, we've had so many problems with air conditioners this year. And uh, that's that spot we're going to take. We're going to get taken care of. But believe it or not, that wasn't a leak. That's an air conditioner happened to that spot right there. And uh, we've had several things. But uh, some of our air conditioners are very, very old. I mean, some of our air conditioners are are creeping up on 30 years and uh, one of the things that's helped them to last 30 years is something that people call plan maintenance and they say that plan maintenance and it's true in your car too right plan maintenance is easier and less expensive than when it breaks down and you have to do maintenance like that so I call healing scriptures and building your faith on healing when you don't necessarily need to receive healing. I call that plan maintenance. Because I find it's easier to stay healed than to get healed. They're both, they're both easy through God. But, but it's easier to stay healed. So it does. Uh, this fall, there's men and women's meetings starting. September 27th is when they will start. And uh, we're going to continue. Uh, this is for the women. The men always meet in this classroom. The women are going to meet uh, next door, and that's going to be on September 27th. And the kids that are under middle school can just join in the nursery. And uh, um, so let's see. If you could, yeah, if there's any men or woman that wants to take a month as far as the food, there's a sign-up sheet. for. No, there's not a sign-up sheet. Yeah, there's a sign-up sheet. And, uh, you know, if you could just tell Miss Charity or I, and uh, um, that will be great. We'll get you down for that. And we are still looking to hire a nursery attendant, okay? That's a hired position, but it's uh, most of the time it's only needed at, at, at 
most of the time it's only needed three hours a week, okay? And so it'd be someone that needed a part-time, part-time, part-time job and somebody that, that could, uh, if, if they're, a, you know, and of course we would like for them to be a believer. We want believers in there with our kids. Um, so it'd be, have to be someone that feeds on the Word of God um, a different time other than our service time. And so we're not opposed either to someone that maybe goes to a different church and they, and they uh, um, you know, have a different time that they can go to church but can be here for our time when we're in church. That, that might be an easy fix because they still get to go to church, all right? And uh, so out of that, and it could be a couple of people, but out of that, it's Sundays and Wednesdays. It's two hours on Sundays, one hour and 15 minutes approximately on Wednesday. And, uh, um, but even uh, um, something that's become more crucial is our men and women's meetings because we have, uh, we have some, some women especially that are the ones that deal with the kiddos all the time. And uh, they really count on that to be able to drop those kids off on that one Monday night a month and go over there with some other ladies of like precious faith and uh, learn about the Lord and have their faith built up, okay? So um, if you know of somebody or want to recommend someone, please do. If you want to recommend someone, uh, you want to recommend us to someone, go ahead and do that as well. That would be fine. Uh, we are thankful for all of our volunteers, everyone that volunteers on anything. With that in mind, before I make that next com uh, announcement, I'm going to say this. We, it, it just, somebody just picked up the slack so seamlessly. We did not know, uh, it didn't dawn on Charity and I with uh, how many people we have quarantining at this time who are not able to gather with us that our greeters were down to one. There was one and in, in there was another that, that is not quarantining, but some other situations uh, in life are preventing them. We were down to one volunteer in the greeting department and she picked it up seamlessly and was out there every single Sunday and, and still is. Um, if that's something that the Lord would lay on your heart and you want to be a part of the greeting team, we could have a short meeting and just tell you what to do. And it would be one Sunday a month. And it is uh, you are uh, one of the first people to greet everyone coming in. And uh, so it's just like it says, you're saying hello, you're shaking hands and hugging people and welcoming people and trying to uh, um, look out for any first time guests and help them find where they need to go as well. But if that's something the Lord lays on your heart, let me know. Um, but the other thing is that September, the whole month of September, we want to designate that and separate that as, um, uh, what are we calling it, a teachers and teachers helpers appreciation month all right so anyone that works with our kids basically we have teachers which you could call them lead teachers they're the ones that do the lesson and then we have a teacher's helper and they help with crowd control they have some other responsibilities uh, um, but they also help us because we want dual uh, um, I don't know in the banking industry we call it dual control I guess with kids you wouldn't call it dual control maybe you would uh, maybe you'd call it dual no control I don't know <laughs> But uh, I guess it depends on the kids you got that week. But we just want to love on them. We want to appreciate them. We're going to put something out in the foyer that's going to have their name on it. And uh, um, if, if you want to get them a little gift, fine. If you want to put a gift card or something in there, fine. Or, or a flower or something like that, great. Um, but um, if you could do something very inexpensive for sure, and that is if you could get a piece of paper and if you know them or have, have run into them or if you just want to thank them and you would just, in your own handwriting, if it's legible in some way, if you would just jot them a note telling them how thankful we are that they're one of our uh, people in the children's department, okay? And uh, I believe that'll bless them. What do you think? Oh, yeah. Amen. We want to show them appreciation. And uh, that, that is one of those volunteer places that uh, um, you know some some people just just can't do it some people try and and some people never try but um, and some people um, because there's some strict guidelines and, and and laws about it that some people cannot do it their background prohibits them from having ever the opportunity uh, to work with kids and uh, so 
that is, man, that's such a, such a uh, ministry. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's such a blessing. I mean, from the nursery to the kingdom kids to our uh, um, TFC kids, um, what, and, and, and then our youth, what a blessing that we have, that we have saved people that love on those kids and, and want to see those kids succeed and want them to know about Jesus. And so that's going to be our opportunity to love on them. And I mentioned youth, but it's not really for the youth workers at this time. It's, it's specifically kingdom kids and TFC kids, which are the three, four, and five-year-olds and the first through sixth graders. And we just, we really want to show those teachers we appreciate the work they do. Because um, in here, you might not know this, but sometimes they, they don't always feel appreciated. Sometimes they feel like they're unnoticed. You know, our TFC kids, they're in another building. This building just isn't large enough for all we need to do. And our TFC kids are in another building even. And, and they have security protocol. They lock doors. I mean, we had, we had a slew of visitors one day this year that got mad at us because we locked the door and didn't understand why we locked the door because they had gone to church here over a decade when we didn't lock that door. But times changed, and we're going to protect them kids no matter who gets mad. But guess who feels the brunt of anyone getting mad because the door is locked? It's those teachers, you know. And so, of course, we let them in, but there's a protocol to do that. They feel the brunt of stuff like that. Sometimes they're over there with just one other person. They get here early. A lot of times they leave here late, and they prepare to bring Jesus to those kids. And so let's, let's do our best. I know I said a lot about that because this is the core group on Wednesday night. And uh, um, with the exception of, of uh, uh, two or three here, um, the rest of you or four aren't. So I want to just give it to you, tell you what my vision is on that so we can all pick that up and just make them feel like they are the most appreciated people on earth. You think we can do it? Yes. Amen. Praise God. Okay, so that's enough about that. One other thing is uh, we're going to have, and we had one of these before, it went so well. And so we're going to have, again, a church roof work day. And we're going to do this on September the 11th at 9 a.m. And uh, um, I'm thinking now that date may change. There's something in my mind uh, about something that, that may change that date, okay? So, uh, but I, let me just put it this way. <laughs> the date is not hard-pressed, but we are going to do it soon. We are going to do it in the month of September where it's not as hot and uh, we're going to do it on a Saturday morning, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have a good time doing it, and uh, we'll, we'll make sure we have a good time doing it, and uh, we'll have some breakfast here or something, and, and the men will get together. So what we're going to do is like we did last time, there's another portion of the roof that we really need to uh, put some sealant on. We have a, a, a leak, um, and, and we know maybe maybe approximately where it is because of the ceiling tile that starts leaking right away but then what we notice is the next thing is we have uh, and we think it's coming from the same spot we have then water in in what is the uh, kiva's office and, and uh, communion prep room we have water in there and then we have water in the little kids department and those rooms the ceilings aren't wet at all so we think it's coming starting in the foyer and it's just going downhill as water does. Well, it finally, when it landed in the kingdom kids uh, during that last typhoon we had, it landed in the kingdom kids and ruined a couple of carpets and uh, um, just took a while to get that smell gone, a lot of chemical. And uh, so we want to just put something on that part of the roof to where that's, that's not going to be an issue anymore. And, uh, and then we're going to, Believe God, okay? We're going to do it, and then we're going to believe God that that will take care of it. But, but men, that is coming up. I, I, again, I just want to say that September 11th is probably not the day, but uh, it's coming up real soon. We thought originally that could be the date, but I know something that, that uh, uh, um, we'd, we'd miss out on some help if that were the date. So <laughs> it's going to be real soon, all right? Praise the Lord. You ready to give tonight? Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pray over it. You pray over yours. Hallelujah. Glory to God. My wife's not here, and 
I didn't get any cash, so I'm going to have to do the text to give. How many of you have done that, that text to give? Okay, one here that's done that. All right, all right, and there's more on Sunday morning. Okay, I know several have. I haven't looked at who all is doing it, but about the same amount that was doing it online have switched over to the text to give. You've done it. Is it pretty simple? Pretty easy? Okay, good, good, good. That's, that's what we want. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray over it. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for receiving our gift right now. We bring it to you. We bring it before your altar. We present it to you. This is our gift. If it's tithe, then we bring in the tithe, which is already yours. But if it's an offering, anything above the tenth, we just bring it to you as a gift, sowing seed into what you have done. We ask you to receive it. And in asking that, scripturally, we have to forgive anyone that we have ought against. And so we do that right now. You said leave your gift and go make it right. So, Father, we we listen on the inside and know if there's somebody we need to forgive so that you'll accept our gift. And we bring this offering in and lay it before you, God. Use it for your glory. Multiply it, God. Thank you for blessing us so that we can bless others. And we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' name. After you give, stand back up.
change our minds. That's what that means. Make it new. Got to change it. Got to change what the world is trying to put in and meditate on what God says. And He is good. He is good. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I don't have a sad tale to tell. Glory to God. This world is not going to hell in a handbasket, as the saying goes. Hallelujah. The truth is marching on. Hallelujah. People are getting saved, healed, and delivered all over the world, aren't they? Praise God. Well, you may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I heard from, um, well, now I'm not sure exactly where it started. but Oh, yeah, Chris Allah. Heard, heard from a, a missionary. Uh, man, he's been a missionary a long time. I heard him speak one time when I was a student in Bible school and uh, mainly in Africa but in other places but but uh, he's talking about some churches in Afghanistan and, and some ministers in Afghanistan that they're not leaving they're not leaving because they're there with the gospel and they're going to spread that gospel hallelujah my goodness man when you're called you're called I, I remember when Grady Pickett in Iraq said he wasn't leaving, you know, and uh, uh, when uh, um, uh, under, uh, under President Obama, they, they took a lot of people out of Iraq, and, and, you know, there was some strategy involved in that one somewhat, at least more than this one, we could say, but uh, still, there was, uh, there was some deficit, there was some problems, and uh, people in the States told Grady, you need to go, and Grady said, I'm not leaving, I'm called to this country. And, uh, you know, as an American uh, staying there, um, he, he, he had to make a determination. Hallelujah. The Bible says the just live by faith. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We, we got to grab a hold of that. The just live by faith. T today we're going to do something. I'm going to read a scripture here that I, that I have on my heart uh, pertaining to being in Christ. But also we're going to have a little bit of a testimony service. Y'all ever been in on one of those? Hey, man. <laughs> when, uh, when I was young, little Pentecostal church, uh, for sure on Wednesday nights and quite a bit of the time on Sunday nights, you had a testimony service. And so what that was is that was usually a break in the music, you know, you'd sing a couple of songs out of the hymnal. And uh, uh, Charity and I, we, we know a lot of the same uh, I pull a fast one on her a lot. She says that after 27 years, I'll still sing a song she's never heard. And uh, it's true. It'll just come to me, and I'll start singing it. And she says, I never heard that. And, you know, Christian songs, Christian music. But some of the songs we both sang in church. But, but uh, she was Baptist, and I was Pentecostal. And so what that means is we sang at different tempos. But some of the songs... <laughs> She said that one time this uh, black choir came in and sang for everybody. And, and uh, she said especially the young Baptist people, you know, they got up and they were clapping. And uh, uh, then uh, um, uh, the next service, uh, the young people thought it was, they were going to get to clap again. And, and their clap got shut down. <laughs> so we had a lot of the same songs, but we sang at different tempos. But... Uh, um, we used to have a testimony service, and uh, you know a testimony is 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 uh, something God's done for you, and uh, uh, you know you, you got to explain that because back then they didn't explain that, and some people get up and talk, and you'd be like, "Man, that's the saddest thing I ever heard in my life." That was just a moany. <laughs> that's all that was. There was no testimony. That was just moany, because that person just moaned for for you know, and sometimes they they moan for a good while, you know. And so you have to say, no, it's a testimony. It's something God did for you. something God brought you out of. You understand what I'm saying. And, uh, but there was one, you know, and you always had, if you've ever been in these services, you know, you always had, uh, because we did them every week, all right? And so not everybody wanted to give a testimony every week. That's reasonable to me. It sounds reasonable. But you always had somebody or a few people that would fill in the gap. I, I mean by that, they would give one every week if you want them to. And sometimes they'd say the same thing as they said last week, but that was okay. If you, were the one, if you were the one that was in charge of the testimony service, you were just glad somebody spoke, you know, that you weren't just standing there looking around. And, and, but there was this one guy, and he gave one every week. 
and uh, he would usually say something, and, and uh, that, that didn't stick with, stick with me. You know, repetition sticks with you. But at the end of his testimony, he would always say this. He would always say, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. And, and you know, I kind of like that. You know, sometimes that's, that's what you got to do. You got to keep on keeping on. Amen. You just got to keep on keeping on. Glory to God. Because this is a walk by faith. Amen. Praise God. It's a walk by faith. I was noticing today through uh, um, all the various, uh, um, you know, with the, if you go on, on the city's Facebook, you can see a lot of opinions and arguments if you want to. I mean, it, you're really going to have to wash your mind afterwards because it gets kind of uh, crazy. But um, it seems like, and you can go on uh, SAISD's uh, posts and things and see the same thing, but it almost seems like about half and half on some issues, you know what I mean? Almost about half and half. And I don't uh, get mad at anybody's belief on either side of it because there's some things that just haven't come out yet. And, you know, some things need to be discussed and they need to be argued. You know, that was a problem for me with social media during the last election is, no, you don't stop people from talking. You let everybody that wants to talk, talk. You say, well, why do you do that? Because anybody with any intelligence, you, you let somebody talk long enough and they're going to slip up. <laughs> but for sure, they're going to tell you exactly how they feel if you just let them talk. And so that was huge. You let people talk. And so I'm the same way with medical things, you know, and part of that's my science background is that argument's good in science. Our argument compels discovery. You know, you need argument. You need two sides of the coin brought forth, so to speak. You don't need people getting mad at the other side of the coin. No, we need that. Because I don't know about you, but I don't know everything. Amen. You know, something that really, really uh, struck me when I learned this, and, and it, was about, it was about Brother Hagen. And uh, uh, Brother Hagen and, and Pop Goodwin, I don't know if you know Pop Goodwin, but... He's a pastor in Assembly of God Church of Pasadena, Texas, for a long time. Uh, I'll tell you this. I, I, have some, I have some printed stories even on the good ones. My, my grandparents knew the good ones real well. But um, out of any modern-day church, I don't know of a church where the glory cloud appeared more than the good ones church. And, and I mean not just the people inside seeing the glory of the Lord. I mean people passing by. I mean, uh, more than once, the fire department was called because of smoke that people outside the church had seen, and it was just the glory of God. Um, but uh, Brother Hagen and Brother Goodwin, they disagreed on one issue, and one, one issue that they disagreed on was uh, a pre-edemic race. And if you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. it there's not enough in the Bible and, and, you know, some of those things that aren't in the Bible, just a few things here or there, sometimes people are weigh too heavily on, on something like that. But the things that God really wants you to get are in there multiple, multiple, multiple times. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Well, you know, in, in, in religious circles, men debating something like that could get very, uh, for lack of a better word, it could get ugly. <laughs> you know? Uh, um, so, um, but not with Brother Hagen and Brother Goodwin. They were the best of friends. And, and had such a love walk and had such a knowledge that they didn't know everything that this is what they would do. And they stayed in love the whole time. But they did this. They said, okay, you present the scripture for your point of view and I'm going to present you scripture from my point of view. I mean, they'd have hours of conversation like this. Nobody else involved or anything like that, just the two of them, okay? And, and so they would each present Scripture on their case. Was there a pre-edemic race? Was there not? And they each presented Scripture. Then they would say, okay, let's switch places. I'll argue your point, and you argue my point. And they would do that. And then neither one of them ever changed their mind but neither one of them got out of love. Neither one of them insulted the other. Neither one of them raised their voice. Neither one of them ever 
became non-friends because of that. And I bring that up because in love, debate is healthy. There's nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? But what you first have to do is you have to first say, you know what? I could be wrong. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. Now, um, personally, you know, when you talk about the rapture, I'm pre-trip. I don't even eat post-toasties. <laughs> I'm pre-trip. <laughs> I'm, pre, I'm pre-trip. I'm pre-chip. You know, I sat down with, with, with somebody one time, and I didn't know if they prayed, you know, here in, here in West Texas, you're going to get some chips and salsa in just about every restaurant. Didn't matter if it's a steak restaurant, you're going to get some chips and salsa, right? So I sat down, and I was like, man, I'm hungry. Do I go for the chip? Do I wait till they get through talking and pray? What do I do? You know, we haven't blessed it yet. And so I, I just finally was able to break in, and I say, are you pre-chip, mid-chip, or post-chip? And they knew exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> and they said, I'm anytime chip. I said, glory to God, me too. <laughs> you know, and so we ate some chips, and then we prayed over the meal, you know. And so we we're blessed. But, uh, um, but, you know, I'm pre-trip. You know, I believe that the rapture of the church will take place, and the salt will have to leave its, its flavoring of this place before the son of perdition can come forward and before the tribulation really gets underway but I have some people that that I'm close to and they're post-trip I have some other people that used to be pre-trip and now they're mid-trip whatever I have some scriptures that support pre-trip and I believe they outweigh post-trip but you know what we're still friends do you know at one time in this church the pastor of this church was pre-trip, and the associate pastor of this trip, of this trip, what a trip. <laughs> Let me say that all over again, okay? We're going to take a mulligan on that one. We might have to take a stroke here in a minute, but, but let's just do that one again. And, and if you've never played golf, you have no idea, but uh, we're doing it over. We're, doing, we're pretending like I didn't swing at that. Okay, the pastor was pre-trip, and the associate pastor was post trip at the same church and they both preached man you know that worked out how did that work out love love not making sure that they weren't getting into division because you know in 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 first corinthians chapter 13 it says that love is better than any spiritual gift you could walk in It, it says that 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 uh, uh, no matter what you think you're doing, if, if you don't have love, then that's all for nothing. Amen. These two gentlemen were, were best friends uh, for as long as I've known them. For as long as I've known them, these two gentlemen were best friends. Yet they had a different view on that. Wow. Is that possible? Yes. Glory to God. Well, can you imagine that that would be possible with our views in medical science. Yeah. Should, should, now again, should both sides be listened to? I believe so. We live in a cancel culture that will always, whatever side they're going to agree in with, they try to cancel the other side. Try to take that other side's voice out and try to take that other side's voice off of social media. I don't agree with that don't agree with that but I do agree especially because medical science is very fluid people now want to say follow the science and they act like science is factual I majored in biology in one of my first science classes guess what we had to go over science changes science changes so anyone following the science is going to go one direction one day and another direction the other day Science, the other word they used is this, science is fallible. We had, a lo- we had a lot of agnostic professors, and so they'd say it like this, you may believe that your God is not fallible, but I'll tell you right now, science is fallible. And there may be one day where 20 scientists prove, supposedly, with experiment after experiment after experiment that this is so, 
and one day another scientist will come along and do this and disprove all of them. Can I tell you that that's happened? Can I tell you that that's happened in our history? Look back on, in particular, the studies of Louis Pasteur, and you will find that science is fallible and fluid. It changes. It changes upon experimentation. That's what it does. In fact, if you, I don't know with the internet if, if they still promote this or teach it, but when I had to do, I had to do a, a, an exhortation, I forget what you called it, seminar, and I had to, in front of other students and a professor, I had to give a talk on something. If I used anything purely off the internet, it was an F. Not one source could I cite off the internet. Okay? Now, we didn't have YouTube then, but believe me, if they could have given a double F, if I would have pulled out my YouTube video, I would have gotten a double F. Okay? I'm just telling you, all right? That would have been, that's nothing. Don't show us that. I had to go to peer-reviewed information. What that is, is published work that could not be published until people other than them had done, people, several, had done the same experiments and got the same results over time. If they got the same results over time, then they could publish that work, okay? And so I'm going to tell you right now that there's a lot of unpeered, reviewed nonsense on both sides of the coin, okay? And, 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 and because of their audiences, they've dumbed down some of the things that they're trying to present until it, it, it doesn't make sense in any science community anyways. Does that make sense? And I'm not saying that in an arrogant fashion. Please hear my heart on that. I'm just saying <laughs> they're taking the meat right out of it and trying to get some buzzwords in there, okay? And so, so why did I say that? I said that to say this. You can listen to both sides of coins. You know what I mean? You can, especially as it pertains to to science medicine or anything like that you can listen to both sides of the coin but after you listen to both sides of the coin you better be in faith I'm gonna pick a hot topic real quick if 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 you sense the need or want to get a vaccine for COVID-19 you better be in faith if you want to not get the vaccine for COVID-19 you better be in faith and so for some, in faith, they're going to get it, and they're going to claim long life, and they're going to have long life. Despite what your YouTuber said, they're going to have long life. They'll live way past 10 years. They will excel. Their body will be in great health. Others, despite what their YouTuber said, others will get the vaccine, will not get the vaccine, never get COVID, and also have long life. You gotta, people have different faith for different things in different arenas. You know what I mean? And, and so I say that to say that we, we, we've, we've got to bring balance to some things. Because if you get too one sided on any issue, you've really painted yourself into a corner and you're probably going to be proven wrong. <laughs> Unless it's the word. <laughs> If it's a word, it'll always be right, no matter what. It'll always be right. So stick with the word. Praise God. Well, that's my testimony because, because in this room, and I would never point to anybody, and I don't want to embarrass anybody, but in this room are people who've been vaccinated for the COVID virus. And in this room, there are people who refuse to be vaccinated for the COVID virus. In the same room, and this is a small group, and I know each of them. Guess what? If they did it in faith, they're going to be fine. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know what? If a virus is part of the plague and can't come nigh my dwelling, then even if there was a backwards vaccine, it can't come nigh my dwelling either. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know, we, we just need to love on each other. 
Amen. And we don't need to be like them people that are dogmatic about either side. We just need to say, hey, how about, how about this? How about we both fight for the right to choose? Uh, you know, used to, there was a bunch of crazy liberals that used to use that term pretty loosely, didn't they? And now they, you know, they had, they had the right to kill their baby, but now they don't like the word choose, do they? Hmm. How about that? Well, let's, in, in these matters, let's fight for the right to choose. You know, we have people that come, and in our services, they wear a mask. Praise God. They're wearing a mask by faith. We have people that come in our services and they do not wear a mask. Well, they're not wearing a mask by faith. Hey, that's their choice, isn't it? Hey, man, someone gets a vaccine, someone doesn't get a vaccine. Hey, do it by faith. It's their choice. Hey, man, hallelujah. I know some missionaries that are in uh, part of the EU, and uh, if they ever get free to come over here, they will have to have a vaccine in order to come over here. But coming over here helps their ministry over there. Coming over here and visiting churches and telling churches what's going on helps what they do over there. Well, guess what? They're going to get the vaccine to come over at some point in time. And guess what? They're going to live 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That's my testimony, if you call it that. <laughs> That's my testimony. Glory to God. Amen. It, it, because we we just going to have to love people. It's hard to, especially people not making any sense. And and there's some people that will present a good argument, and there's some people that will just not make any sense. You know what I'm saying? And so for us, the, the most information we get right now as a society is social media. Balance it. Just balance it. Just once or twice listen to the other side of that coin and just balance it. So that you know you have all the information and then you make a decision. Amen. Or here's something even more spiritually mature. Just be led. Amen. Be led. Glory to God. And is it possible that God would lead someone to have that vaccine and God would lead someone not to? Yeah. It sure is. It sure is possible that God would lead in that direction. Because God knows you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well... D, I guess you should be first, huh? And, and uh, you know, usually people just pop up like popcorn to do this, but, but uh, um, you know, the folk at, on uh, Facebook Live would want to see and hear you, so would you use that? Time to yeah. Well, how much time do you need? You may be the only Put testimony. <laughs> this is D. what I was taught uh, faith without works is dead and if you don't practice what you're you're told and what you read in the Bible then there's no sense in doing it you have to read it over and over and over and you have to hear it over and over and over so I go by that whatever I, I think it's Mark yeah it's Mark he says that whatever you want if you believe when you pray I think that's the way it goes. You shall receive. So I use that in my healing. So every day I've been praying for healing. Um, I went and had the test done because I trust my doctor so much. She's wonderful. Well, we've been going through the medication things, changing this and adding that. And so over the last few months, so today I went. And last week I had my labs. And I found out today my heart is really good. My blood pressure is very low. I haven't had hot flashes in over like weeks, and my and uh, 
and everything is back to normal. My lads were all normal. I had no problems at all, and that's all because of Amen. that Amen. right there. Praise so I'm God. good. I'm ready. Awesome, awesome. Who else has a testimony? Somebody has something God did for them, encouraged someone else. Come on up here. Okay, come on. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. But these these people on Facebook, they want to see you. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Johanna, and mine is not about uh, my health. It's about my um, palm tree that I had in the back of my yard. And all of us remember the snowstorm it froze everything um, I had three palm trees two of them I'm guessing maybe a month after we started seeing green growth there was a huge one in the back and my daughter told me um, if it doesn't grow within a certain amount of uh, time it's dead so oh my goodness I said well we'll see if it grows well I was reading a book by Dominic Gomez, mm -hmm. and he spoke at HEB camp. This is in August, right? The snowstorm happened in February. Well, uh, he gave us all a book, blessed us with the book, and I don't know if we have any more here in the church, we but should, yeah. um, you get one because it's really good. And um, he talked about an incident where uh, someone gave his wife a pear tree um, and he didn't plant it when he should have so it was almost dead well he started um, he realized it went and planted it claimed scripture over it uh, he also said in Hebrews 4:12, um, the word is alive and it has power um, he talked about um, the fig tree when Jesus cursed the fig tree and, and it died because it wasn't producing any fruit well, um, he said, what if I pray for this tree? You know, the opposite of what Jesus said. I'm sure if he prayed life into this pear tree, it would, it would come alive. Well, as soon as I read that, I went outside, laid hands on my um, palm tree. This was in July when we went. So it was 1st of August probably because I read it quickly, you know, as soon as I got back. And um, when did I text you, Pastor? Uh, was it last week? Two days ago, maybe. Oh, it, man, okay. Uh, it hasn't <laughs> been very long. I was Time outside flies. watering uh, my rose bushes in the back, and there's green growth coming out in the front. And every time I kept going out there, I wasn't seeing any green growth, but I kept claiming and believing because I'm speaking God's word. And it's live and it's powerful. So if he can help for a palm tree, he can help anybody. Uh, their finances, their marriage, um, mm. their children. The word of God is very powerful. So mm -hmm. that's my Amen. report. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Come on up here, Brother James. Isn't this good? Didn't this encourage you? Amen. Hello, my name is James. Um, I do physical therapy. I travel to Arizona, Sonora. I'm always traveling out of town, treating, helping people. And this is a story of mine that I still remember, remember quite well. I was heading back home from Sonora, passing Cristobal. It's going 65, and I was drinking water out of a jug. And I took a big old drink, and it went down my windpipe. I started choking on this water, and I started, my eyes got watery, I spit the water out, and I started I was choking, I took off my gas, and I passed out. And I crossed the lane, I think, I, I felt my truck speeding up, and I crossed the lane on the other side. I was going from, from Cristobal to San Angelo, and I, I know I was hitting 70, 75, and I passed, and I passed out for two or three seconds. And uh, when I woke up, were watery, my truck was bouncing on the other side of the highway, and I just started praying. I said, Lord, this is going to hurt. This is not good. I'm going to either die or I'm going to be disabled. This is not good. So I just started praying real hard. And as I started praying, I started seeing, I couldn't see. 
people that I told not to use it. And I was collecting this stuff in the back and bouncing everywhere. And I started praying, please, God, please, God, help me. And all of a sudden, my truck started floating. This whole traction. And it just crossed over the other side of the highway. Like my tires were just smooth. And I was bouncing. I was scared. I was crying. I was, And my truck just slowly glided over the other side of the highway. Praise God. And I, I went down about 45, 50, and my eyes were watery, and I saw a truck coming my way. Either I couldn't tell if it was parked or it was watching me see what I was going to do, flip over, hit over metal or concrete. or uh, So I, as, I pull, as I pull over down to 25, I started praying, like, oh, my gosh, I'm okay. And I, I didn't stop. I just kind of, like, I was in shock. And I, I started praying. I said, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And as I kept going, I was like, wow, that was a miracle. But yeah, yeah. it was uh, one, of those, one of those situations that I knew was going to be real bad. But um, the angels and God were watching over me that day. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Awesome. Awesome. Anybody else? We've got time for one more. Yes, Rhonda, come on. Well, first, I want to, um, with Johanna, when Greg and I bought our house, our yard and trees had had years of neglect, and they were all pretty much on their last leg. We have a huge mulberry in the back, not good, lots of it. So we started doing that, praying over our lawn, praying over our trees, and we have a beautiful lawn to this day. Praise you know, God. glory to God on that. Um, I think my testimony is more going to be about the goodness of God. Uh, last year, a lot of you know that I worked for a man um, that I cared about very much. And he passed away with cancer. And it was really hard. It was really hard. I was with him 12 hours a day. Um, there were times he would look at me and, and, and just cry and say, what would I do if you weren't here to help me? You know, we were really close. Um, and during that time, Greg was on the road, so I was home alone a lot. I wasn't at church Wednesday night. I wasn't at church for the meetings, for any meetings. Sunday morning, I'd make it, and that was it, because I was with, with this family, taking care of this man. Um, and I felt like I should be there, you know, but it was hard. I'd never been with somebody as, as they pass. It's never, you know, it was hard. During that time, I would read the word, but when I go through a hard time, I tend to internalize things, you know, and I don't reach out to people. I don't reach out to God. And I know that's something, I know that, I don't know how many of you are like that, you know, but I just focused on what I needed to do with him and would come home and go to bed and get up and do it again the next day. And at one point in time, I was reading my word, and all of a sudden, I felt God just love on me. Mm. And... He told me that he had never once left me, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't really acknowledging him. I don't know how to explain it because I was praying and all, but I wasn't putting any emotion in it, any feeling in it, because it was all I could do to get through every single day with this family, you know. And it wasn't a horrible thing. I'm not trying to make it out horrible, but it was something I'd never been through before. And so it was just really hard to watch somebody fade away like that's very hard. You know, and um, the testimony is how good God is because even though I was, I don't want to say backing away, I don't know how to explain it other than I wasn't present for him, he let me know the entire time he was present and with me. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking back and realized yeah. he was the entire time. Yes. And he didn't feel, he wasn't angry at me. I didn't have to feel guilty. I didn't have to feel lesser than or not good enough because I didn't give my all to God at that time, he didn't care. He just loved me through the whole thing. Amen. And, and that spoke to me, and it, it, it changed me mm. in that Praise way. God. So. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I, I call that checking out, you know. But, man, did you hear what she kept doing? She still read her word. 
she still prayed, even though, you know, she didn't feel it, is one way to put it. She just didn't feel it, but she made herself do it anyways. Man, you know, and, and, and uh, she uh, uh, would have, you know, God would have sent somebody, done what he had to do, and, and she could have come out of that, but it wouldn't have been as quick as she did. You know, wouldn't been as quick as she did. Praise God. Well, let's stand. Huh? Sure, sure. Yep. Come on up here. One real quick one. Don't stand up yet. There you go. I want to just share how, uh, you know, being over the road, um, one thing I've always enjoyed about driving is uh, I can put on any preaching I want to listen to. Yeah. I can listen to any praise music all day long because I'm just driving, you know. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I can pray in tongues if I want. I mean, I can do anything I want to do. But there's something different about it when you're just out there by yourself, mm. you know. And and so you're getting all that word coming in, you know, you're praying and all that. But somehow the, it still feels like there's a distance. Mm-hmm. And one thing I wanted to say about is uh, thanks to an injury, I, I've been able to be here every service. Wow. And... I've decided I'm not, no matter what happens, I'm not going back out there. Um, because what I get from the body, yeah, yeah, it's crucial, fills me. Yeah. It means so much more. Yeah. I feel a part of again, where I felt just like a stranger before. Mm-hmm. You know, even though I knew everybody was still here for me if I needed them, I just felt like a stranger, mm-hmm. almost, a visitor. Yeah. And so I just want to say that, that being part of the body, some people have to sit home. Some people have to because of certain circumstances or anything like that. But I would say if you haven't been here for a while and you used to come here, you need to really work on getting back. Amen. 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 That's right. That's it. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Man, God told us what we needed to do, didn't he? Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together yep in these last days as in the case of some amen (laughs) forsake not as soon as you can get to church you need to get to church praise god well let's just stand let's just praise god and we'll go home or wherever you're going (laughs) father you're just so good we just praise you we just magnify you we just thank you thank you for these wonderful testimonies thank you father thank you dear god that you would walk amongst us Thank you, Father, that you would be our very close friend. Thank you that you would be our very own Father. We thank you, God. Thank you for these marvelous testimonies. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our lives and for strengthening us and building us up on our most holy faith. And we glorify you and praise you and count on you. And we know, according to the 91st Psalm, that we are protected. That you will protect us. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling in Jesus' name, for we are protected. We are protected as we stay in you, and we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.